Okay, guys, we're going to talk about the New Deal and the end of the Great Depression. So you'll recall from last time, the Great Depression is this huge economic downturn. It's more than a downturn. It's a crushing dive to the bottom where the stock market just falls apart. And because so many banks and people and all these things are invested in the stock market and there's like there's no insurance for these banks. They don't have to carry enough money to support their investments. There's none of these regulations in, in place at this time that we have today. So nowadays, a bank has to have enough money to cover what it's loaning out and to keep itself solvent, which means in business. Back then, no such luck. So, you know, you've got kids lining up for soup kitchens just to get one meal a day. You've got this guy selling his car as, as quickly as he can just to get some money to uh, feed his family, maybe. You've got, uh, you know, political ads because there's an election coming up and it's the it's when Hoover gets voted out and Roosevelt, FDR, gets voted in. So this is when we see a, you know, big political change because of this uh, depression is so bad. And in with Roosevelt is going to come his new deal, his idea of giving everybody a new fair deal on American principles, like what should what should America truly be like for the little guy. And that's why he gets elected. So 1932, Franklin get, uh, D. Delano Roosevelt is elected. 90% of Texans support him. That's a big landslide. Uh, there's a Texan who is the vice president who's helping to push New Deal programs through Congress because the vice president works as a member of the Senate. Um, you have in 1933 the start of New Deal programs. Now, those New Deal programs are called the alphabet agencies. They're called the alphabet agencies because they all had an acronym like the uh, CCC for the Civilian Conservation Corps or the Youth Administration, uh, National Youth Administration, so NYA, and then you have PWA, Public Works Administration. <clears throat> and bottom line with all of these agencies is that they were designed to put people back to work. Um, and they created projects that invested in American infrastructure. That what infrastructure is, roads, bridges, parks, uh, you know, historical sites, all those sorts of things are considered infrastructure. So in order to get Americans working again, the United States government spent a lot of money on America, building things that we take for granted today. Um, so when you look at these things, it's really interesting projects. This The National Youth Administration, its goal is actually to keep kids in schools, but provide summer jobs. They didn't want kids dropping out of school and competing for uh, jobs that they needed adults to get. So they didn't want, uh, you know, a 15 year old kid dropping out of school and going into the workforce. They wanted to keep him into, in school for a little while longer. And if they could provide summer jobs where the kids could earn a little bit of money to help out the family, then definitely. Not to mention a lot of those summer jobs were forestry projects. So you took the kid out of the family's like, you know, food bill, you put him in a camp somewhere where he's blazing trails and cutting logging roads and things like that, doing projects that are, he's not necessarily getting paid that much money for, but he's getting room and board. So he's staying at a camp and he's getting paid a little bit of money and fed. That was a big help to a lot of families. So these programs did just that. They put people back to work. Now, um, there are some really interesting, like just to take a look at this map, and you can do this when you uh, open up the uh, thing, but I'm going to move the pane a little bit here. So this is Texas. All of these dots in here represent different projects that were done in Texas. And if you click on this link in the in the slides when I share it with you, you can go check out this uh, map and you can see what these things are here in Texas and all over the country. All right, so we're gonna go back to the PowerPoint here and let me adjust the frame again. 
So we get the whole presentation in there. But yeah, I encourage you to go check out that map. It's really cool. You can see some of the projects that are here in our state. For example, the Riverwalk, uh, Brackenridge Park, um, La Vita, all of these places were examples of projects that were done by the New Deal to get Texans and San Antonio's or San Antonians back to work. Now, what other programs look like in the New Deal, for example, with the Dust Bowl, you have contour plowing. Uh, contour plowing is this is idea where you change the shape of the land. You kind of make the land like a little bowl with a big high side to one part of your field. So with, when the wind blows across your field, it hits that hill and the hill will have like grasses planted on it. So when you've plowed your field, the wind goes up and over that hill, but it doesn't blow straight across your field, picking up all the plowed dirt. And so it prevents the, the, the dust from getting up in the wind. It prevents the topsoil from, from being blown away. <clears throat> the government also paid for uh, farmers to plant trees. So you would have a line of trees along the road that would also slow the wind down to prevent the dust storms. So by 8, 1938, you've got the dust storms are beginning to slow down and not be as common. And as we recall, those are really bad dust storms. Okay, these are both Texas towns at the top that are just getting wiped out by huge clouds of, of dust. So you think about a cold front where there's a huge storm on the horizon, big thunderhead of clouds, you know, big thunderstorm rolling in. It's, it's like that, big, huge, high clouds, but it's not a cloud. It's a dust cloud. It's, it's just, you know, it's like taking a big bunch of flour and, you know, throwing it up in the air and it makes a big cloud or like the cloud of deodorant in the boys' locker room, that kind of thickness. But it's, it's yeah, I mean, you can see these people are disappearing in the dust down here. And this is what happens when it settles. That is a car buried in the dust. So, yeah, this is, this is seriously bad for people. Now, while the New Deal programs are a big part of ending the Great Depression, they do a lot to put people back to work. We look at this chart and we see that here in 1939, that's when the New Deal, or excuse me, 1933, that is when the New Deal starts. And you can see there's a downward slope towards, you know, less unemployment going from 25%. God, that is high. I mean, 25% is an insane amount of unemployment. So you go from downward slope, downward slope from the start of the New Deal. There's this little blip up, and I'm not sure why it went back up. I'd have to do some more research that I just unfortunately didn't have time for. But I am curious about why it went up a little bit. Maybe some of those agencies uh, shut down or something was going on in 1937. And then here in 1938, by 1938, we are starting to provide, or 39 rather, by 1939, we're providing weapons and guns for uh, Europeans in World War II. So World War II has started in Europe. It hasn't gone worldwide yet, um, and, but we are providing weapons for them. But by December 7th, 1941, Pearl Harbor, we are in the war. And then as we're in the war, having a job in the military, being a soldier, counts as being employed. So oof, it goes way down. By 1943, 1944, we're almost at 0%. I think we reached almost like 98, 99% employment. That has never been reached bef before or since this time period uh, in U.S. or Texas history. This is a unbelievable amount of people going to work and it really does end the depression by getting everybody back to work there's a huge amount of government spending to fix the problems to get ready for war you see it start with the new deal and kind of go down and then a little bit and then whammo world war ii question is what would have happened if there was no world war ii 
would we have gone down you know this kind of path at this same slope or would we have done this sort of thing all the way down until it had gone i think that uh eventually we probably would have gone down but it would have been a much much different slope to uh, what we're looking at here so just something to think about and we will talk world war ii next